Thank you for joining us on Suncoast FYI. I'm your host, Nancy O'Neill. Our guests today are Marlene Warsbeck, Promotion Chairman for the Art Uptown, and Liz Cole, Art Uptown's board member and secretary, along with Jennifer Mitchell, Executive Vice President and CEO for Circus Arts Conservatory, and Rabbi Ed Rosenthal on behalf of Repair the Sea. Jennifer joined the Circus Arts Conservatory in 2008 when it was known as Circus Sarasota. In 2013, she was promoted to the managing director, but now serves as their executive vice president and COO. Her dedication and passion for the Circus Arts Conservatory continues to preserve this amazing Sarasota treasure. Thank you for taking the time to be here. You have a huge job and a fun job, I'm yes. sure. Yes. Oh my gosh. Uh, so let's start. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what the Summer Circus um, Spectacular is gonna be? Well, we're so excited to once again present the Summer Circus Spectacular at the Ringling in the historic Oslo Theater, which is also oh, one of our treasures beautiful. here in Sarasota. Yes. Uh, and each year during the summer, we collaborate with the Ringling to bring some of the finest, most talented and incredible circus artists that are out there in the world, globally, mm -hmm. right here to Sarasota. A uh, beautiful one hour performance um, where you can't see anything like it anywhere else. Okay, now what are, what are some of the acts that our viewers are going to be, if you don't mind sharing a few of those? I will give a sneak okay. peek. All right. uh, we have incredible hand balancing duo, the Alexi brothers, who are headlining the summer show. Often we feature uh, a special artist, in this case, two brothers, who were the longest running artist on Cirque du Soleil's Mystère in Las Vegas. They spent more than 30 years oh working for Cirque gosh. du Soleil. An incredible duo from Portugal. Um, brothers who are trained in hand balancing and among the world's greatest. But you're gonna see a whole variety show. Okay. Uh, fun comedians who are often gonna keep us at the edge of our seat, but also laughing. Okay. A beautiful duo uh, hand balancing, crystal balancing act. What's crystal balancing? They're going to be balancing stemware. Um, so you haven't seen anything like that yet. And they're not plastic. Uh, they're not. <laughs> uh, so there is some risk involved, of course, but okay. we're the circus. So we yes, like to always go. excite you. On the edge. Uh, exactly. The edge. And a beautiful aerialist from San Diego, from California, uh, a young prof professional talented artist who is going to be debuting for the first time with the Circus Arts Conservatory. Wow. We are always out there looking for the best of the best. Mm -hmm and mm -hmm. we really love to combine traditional circus arts with contemporary artistry as well. Okay, now how do your shows come together when you're saying you find this person, you find that person, but then there's all of those other elements that come in like the, the lighting and the design. Sure. How does that all well, work? Well, let me talk a little bit about recruitment. Okay. So we uh, comb the world over and that's not so hard in the digital age anymore right. because we are receiving videos daily from mm -hmm. artists who want to come to Sarasota. Uh, internationally, this is known as the circus capital of the world. Of course. And so many, many artists want to perform right here where legends still live within yes. the circus arts. Yes. Uh, so recruitment is not so hard. But we also look toward um, the festivals, award winners. The circus industry is booming globally now after the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And so there are many, many competitions and festivals where artists are featured. And we look for those winners to bring them here. There you go. Now, um, the Oslo isn't the only location that you use. You right. also use the uh, Ulla Searing Big Top yes. at, at uh, Benderson. How does, how does it vary? How does it differ from going from one place to the other? How do you set the shows up? Well, they are certainly very, very different facilities. Sure. Our Big Top being um, a facility in very unique, beautiful, magical space within mm -hmm. a Big Top that seats nearly 1,200. 
in the historic Oslo Theater, an yep. intimate, beautiful, decadent theater, we entertain about 250. So no audience member is more than 50 feet away from the artist. And being in this historic, beautiful uh, mm -hmm. venue really enriches the experience of feeling connected to the circus artist. Mm -hmm. Well, since we have some time, yeah. I wanted to talk a little bit about what you have going on this summer as well. Do you have classes? Oh, yes. Or well, the Circus Arts Conservatory is busy year-round. Yes. 365 okay. days a year, we are here serving wow. Sarasota, Bradenton, and Southwest Florida. Wow. Um, we do so, well, obviously. Thank well, thank you. <laughs> it's, it's our pleasure, and, and honestly, it is our passion and commitment to keeping mm -hmm. the circus legacy alive. Mm -hmm. um, but we not only produce incredible performances that pe people can come and patronize and buy tickets for, but we uh, have recreational classes. We add circus to your fitness regimen. Anyone who's interested in silks, flying trapeze, or a variety of other circus disciplines can come to the Sailor Circus and Arena and train there at any wow. age. We see as young as five, as old as 90 on the flying trapeze. Oh my gosh. We are holding summer camps, uh, ages six to 15. And those summer camps, I might be biased, but they're among the most fun oh, and engaging here in Sarasota. Uh -huh. A beautiful blend of athleticism and artistry for young, young kids to get involved in. Do they get to perform after? I mean, is there a yes, show they do. after? Okay. There's one week and two week sessions. Okay. And at the end of each session, they sh have a showcase costumed for their parents. Um, and that's, of course, the beauty of the circus. It allows young people to find empowerment and self-confidence through training and performance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, where can our viewers go to find you? What's your website? Our here? website is circusarts.org. They can call us at 941-355-9335. We have beautiful website with lots of information and we love to get people involved in the circus arts. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you again for being here. It was a pleasure meeting you. Thank you so much. Our next guest, Rabbi Ed Rosenthal, shares with us how we can help to repair the sea a project you'll want to learn more about, so please stay with us. Born and raised in landlocked St. Louis, Rabbi Ed's love for the undersea world of Jacques Cousteau led him, many years later, to pursue his love of the water and scuba diving. Knowing the threats that face our beautiful coastline is what prompted Rabbi Ed to begin the initiative called Repair the Sea. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Nancy. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm glad you, um, you found us. <laughs> <laughs> it's my good fortune. After being in, in uh, uh, landlocked uh, St. Louis, mm. so here we are. Um, what is, let's start with, what is the, the dive that you have um, against debris in Tampa Bay? Okay. Um, the organization Repair the Sea, yes. it, it started as a program with, with students okay. um, at Eckerd College in St. Petersburg. Right. And it was a, I was the campus rabbi, still am, and um, it was a, a, the club was called Scooby Jew. It's open to everybody, but it's, since I was the campus rabbi, they humored me. That was, that is very <laughs> cute. And the club, um, go, we go out every other week into Tampa Bay mm -hmm. and we remove debris from the St. Petersburg downtown reef. So it's ongoing. So that's how the, the, the name Repair the Sea came about. It is ongoing. Mm -hmm. uh, the name Repair the Sea comes from the Jewish tenet Tikkun Olam, to repair the world. And it's part of the Jewish tradition that um, we believe that when God created the world, it was perfect. And then humans got thrown in the mix and we messed it all up. So Tikkun Olam. I know, don't we do yeah. that? Yeah. So Tikkun Olam is the Jewish tenet to repair the world. Aww. And since we focus on the water, we call it Tikkun Hayam, to repair the sea. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Thank you. And you have a boat that you take off, or do you we, go off the, the shore? We have a boat. Um, the boat, boat was donated um, several years ago. Um, unfortunately, it was a tragedy. It was donated in memory of a student. Scrap that. I don't want to get that's too depressing. Okay. <laughs> okay. We uh, do it. So we'll stop. Okay. So do you, uh, do you go off the shore, or do you have a boat that you take out? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. Okay. But we do want to mention the boat. Sure. Okay. 
So Rabbi, do you, uh, when you go out into Tampa Bay, do you go off the shore or do you have a boat that you have access to? We actually have a boat mm -hmm. and the boat's name is Allie's Way. And um, we go out regularly, but a couple years ago, the starboard engine died. Oh dear. And the students said, why are we, we're gonna replace the engine. And we decided that it would be too expensive to replace the engine gas guzzling, exhaust sure. spewing, oil dripping engine. Mm -hmm. And so it's been a three year process, but we've just converted her from gas to solar power. That's wonderful. Yes, we're very excited. Yes. Wow. So you had local help to do that, I'm We guessing. had local and international help. Um, the, the companies that manufacture the batteries and mm -hmm. the propulsion system, um, as well as Allie's parents have donated the majority of the, the material and funds that's, necessary. That's wonderful. Now you don't just stay in Tampa Bay, you travel as far down as Key Largo? And working with not the, on the boat. Not on the boat. No. Okay, but you're working with the coral restoration. We work with down coral there. restoration. We work with eye care, and um, it's all about finding different ways to really repair the sea. Mm -hmm. We have a program that we started a few years ago called our Reverse Tashlich. Tashlich in the Jewish tradition is on Rosh Hashanah, the New Year. We go to a body of water and we symbolically cast our sins off for the year. And a few years ago, I was teaching students about this, and one of the students said, you know, Rabbi, there's already more than enough sin in the water. Why don't we take some of it out instead? Oh. And we did a reverse Tashlich, and we did a cleanup uh, on campus. That was with five students in 2016. Okay. And last year, um, it went viral, and we had 245 communities in 12 countries on six continents go to waterfront locations where they live as part of their high holiday observance and remove debris from the water. That's beautiful, what you've started, mm -hmm. my goodness. Now, what about our mangroves? What, what's going on with the, with the cleanup of those? In the we get into the mangroves as well, not just mm -hmm. the beaches. Beaches, yeah. generally, I mean, there's always debris on the beach. Um, and a lot of the municipalities clean those regularly because of the tourism. Mm -hmm. But our mangroves are in desperate need of yes, cleaning. So whenever anybody, if you're, anybody is out, they should always do their best to clean the mangroves. Um, I have a couple more questions. Since they have um, that lovely fair, the Gasparilla mm -hmm. Fair, a lot of beads have their, make their way into Tampa Bay. How do you remove those? We have a program that we do called Beads Out of the Bay. And we go in, over in Seedon Channel in Tampa, where uh -huh. many of the, uh, the Gasparilla flotilla, although a few years ago they made it illegal, so mm -hmm. you can't throw beads from boats anymore. Oh, good. But there are so many beads still in the bay. Mm -hmm. So um, we take groups of, of divers over and we just remove the beads. It's, it's like a treasure hunt. There you go, yeah. Right. Well, because okay. there's very little visibility under the water yes. in, in Tampa Bay. Yeah. So when you're, when you're down on the bottom and you see glistening beads of blue and purple and red. It's really... It's, or maybe you hope it's treasure. You exactly, hope it's treasure. It's plastic. Right. Okay. <laughs> Not quite treasure. So, the plastic. Yes. That's, that's what I wanted to ask you about. You have the, the initiative about trading out plastic cut cutlery for recycled... No, for compostables. Compostables. Yes. Okay. So what we have, and this is only in Sarasota, or Sarasota County, mm -hmm. that thanks to the Charles and Marjorie Baransic Foundation, there's a company that we work with called Verterra that manufactures easily compostable cutlery made only from wood and water. So there's the kind of compostable that's made from corn products. Yes. Um, that requires a high degree of heat okay. to actually break those down, okay. and we don't have that in Sarasota. Okay. So the Verterra products are made only from wood, okay. and they'll break down in your backyard composter in 90 days. Okay. So thanks to the Baranza Foundation, yes. for any faith-based organization, any church, any synagogue, any mosque or temple, um, we will exchange the, the Verterra compostables for all of their plastic cutlery. That they have on, that's wonderful, okay. Um, so before we close, where can our viewers go to find you to do that? They can go to our website, which is www.repairthesea.org, 
and they can send me an email, they can call me, okay. um, or an explanation of the program is on the website as well, under our programs, as our Blue Green Initiative. Thank you so much for all you're doing to help us. We, we really need more people like you. Well, thank you for having me, and thanks for letting me share this with Absolutely. your audience. Art Uptown is here next to share details about their June exhibit titled The Small Works Show. Established in 1980, Art Uptown is a partnership of over two dozen accomplished regional artists. The artists are juried based on both the quality of work and the degree in which it differs from what is already being shown. Marlene Wurzbach is their PR chairperson and Liz Cole serves as a board member and their secretary. They're here to share details about their newest show. Welcome, thank you. Thank you for having us. Did I pronounce your name correctly? Close oh, enough. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Thank you. <laughs> um, so you have uh, a new exhibit that's up. Uh, it started at the end of May, and it's currently going on. It's um, titled Small Works. Yes. Which we have here, which is delightful. So please tell our guests a little bit about the gallery. Give them a little bit of background, if you would, please. Sure. I'm happy to do that and have been there as a member since uh, 2017, so I've had a long time in artist terms of being part of Art Uptown. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned we started in 1980, so we are now in our 43rd year. That's amazing. It is amazing, Great. and we've had the same family of landlords since 1980, which is pretty unique. I, I think we could probably say we're one of the oldest businesses on Main Street in mm -hmm. downtown Sarasota. Mm -hmm. Okay. and. Uh, you represent, as I mentioned, uh, over two dozen artists right. now. And, Twenty-seven. That's okay. Currently. And what is currently being offered by those members? What, what type of artwork are we are we going to see? We have a wide variety. Um, we have painters in oils, acrylics, watercolors, and collage. A photographer, new photographer, a bronze sculptor, surrealistic clay sculptor, multimedia sculptor clay potter, stained glass artist, and glass artist. We usually have a jeweler, and we hope to have another one again soon. Wonderful. And that's what you said. I mean, I, I ran a gallery for a number of years, so I, I can appreciate that you're always looking to fill a niche. Right. And there's so many incredible artists out there, so I'm sure you have quite a challenging time finding uh, you know, just the, just the right mix for you. So how long has each of you been exhibiting at the gallery and are any of your works represented here today? Go well, ahead, Marlon. I've, I've <laughs> um, been there since 2018. Uh -huh. And I'm a realistic acrylics painter. And what I see, I paint. And um, my um, clownfish is up in the left-hand corner. Lovely. Um, Lovely. Ian Beggs, one of our newest artists, came mm -hmm. up with this idea for this show for June, uh, where all of us are invited to uh, submit um, works that would fit into frames nine and a half inches. He, in addition to being a wonderful painter, is also a skilled framer, and he mats the paintings. So he pulled it all That's together, but he's great. on vacation and couldn't be with us today. Aww. Well, um, next time. <laughs> but we've got 30 works so far. and. Uh, uh, well, it, that's the show's up, so 30 yep, works. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. And uh, the price points, do they do they vary or because they're all the same size? Are they all the same price each, points? Each artist gets to choose their price point. Okay, well that's nice because obviously some are more detailed and, than, than others. Now, uh, downtown is going through a lot of reconstruction. We've all had to deal with that. How has that affected your businesses? Well, I think that's an excellent question. I appreciate you asking that. Um, we know that I, the thing that drew me here was the fact that it's called the cultural coast. The arts are rich in opportunity. And I hear that from customers that come in the door. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> with all of the growth that's happening, uh, the downtown in particular, it's really started to create a problem for galleries. I, as I mentioned, I've been there since 2017. So in that six-year time, 
as an example on Palm Avenue, there used to be a beautiful string of lovely galleries that were our partners, for instance, for the first Friday walks. Exactly. Well, there's not so many anymore. And I think, you know, one of the things I'm concerned about is how do we reverse that mm -hmm. trend? It's getting more and more expensive to, to have a business on Main Street because it is so trendy now. It is. It and is. so consequently, who, the arts are the last people to have a lot of extra money in their pockets. Right. <clears throat> and so right. We, we really do need to think about that as a community. Mm -hmm. Well, I totally agree with you there. And um, I'm, I'm disappointed to hear that you know, it's affecting you, um, you in that way. Um, there are still the first Friday art walks taking place, though. There are. Okay. And what are your hours of operation? Uh, right now, we have two different hours during the season, which <laughs> ends basically at the end of May. Um, we go seven days a week, but off season, which is the summer because it is slower, we're mm -hmm. open Tuesday through Saturday. And from Tuesday through Friday, we're open from 11 to 5 on Saturday. I guess they're all 11 to 5, on, well, except for First Friday, and I'm glad you plugged that. Okay. Because that's the time that we celebrate. We'll have a big opening with this, and along with each month when we have our artists there, it's a wonderful time to bring the community in. And we do have, uh, it really, we see a lot of people returning, but it gets so that's that wonderful. we, yeah, that's we really And enjoy people it. get to meet the artists because. As many of us, then. well, as right. many of us who can attend do. Okay, wonderful. Now, uh, before we close, please tell our viewers: uh, Do you have a website that they can go to to view the art and artists that you have in your gallery? We do. It's called ArtUptownGallery.com, okay. and each artist has their own little gallery on there. So you click on an artist, and it'll take you to an array of their works, which are, of course, all for sale which um, is a, one way of, of promoting our gallery, so we encourage them to do that, to stop wonderful. by at any time. We have wonderful staff there during the week, and um, it, we have a price point. The thing is, we are affordable for everyone. Whether you're a new time buyer or you're someone who has been collecting for a long time, wonderful. you can bring art into your home. We provide that. Okay, well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you both for being here. Thank and, you. And um, look forward to seeing the rest of the show. Thank you very much, Nancy. We hope you enjoyed the show today and thank you for joining us on Suncoast FYI. If you would like to promote your nonprofit or community event, we would love to hear from you and this is a complimentary service. Please email us at fyi at snntv.com. To view previous episodes, go to snntv.com and click on the What's On tab. I'm Nancy O'Neill, and we'll see you next week on Suncoast FYI.